Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 19. It's the NK Zagreb save. I am cultured left foot. And there's no face cam today because I've had uh, a little bit of a procedure thing on my face. So it's not very pretty. It's pretty red. But I thought we'd crack on with the video and get an episode out of the NK Zagreb save. And we've got a lot of things to talk about. We are currently still 8th in the table. It's going pretty damn well as you can see around here. Eight, uh, 27 games played, we've won 13, drawn 7, lost 7, we've got 18 plus goal difference and 45 points. So it's been uh, probably what I would have expected for our first season. We're men are finishing the top half, that is pretty much what we're doing. We're quite a way off the playoffs. What's that, like uh, 7, 12 plays, 12 points, so not actually as far as I thought. 12 points off the playoffs. So a lot of work to do for next season, but this is what we're now building towards. We're building towards next season already. Um, and we touched on it last time that we had this weird scheduling. Like after Christmas, there's basically only two league games a month. So we've been playing quite a lot of friendlies. Now we had a run of friendlies where we organised them to try and make money for the club. Which was okay. But then we went on this run of results. Like So we lost in the league 2-1 to Spansko. Which was very annoying. Very, very annoying actually when we touch on it. Um, and then... We drew 3 3 of Huge Pest, we lost to Grika, and we drew Zap into Zabreski. And the morale sort of plummeted. In fact, it was all through this bit of December as well. The morale sort of plummeted, and then people started complaining about the dressing room atmosphere, one of which was Anthony Knezovic, who is obviously the captain. But now he's delighted to see a huge improvement in the dressing room atmosphere. And that has sort of come about because we've been playing friendlies against really rubbish teams and smashing them. Which is really helpful, obviously. Um, we did get, last time we touched on it, we got our new staff member in, which was Brett Higgins as the head of youth development. There he is. He has been in charge of the games in the friendly games. And so he's been doing pretty well, Brett. You've been actually doing pretty well. Something else that he's done is bring in our youth intake for the next, uh, next well, this youth intake for this season. And he's brought in what was described, I'll put a screenshot on screen, as the golden generation of NK Zagreb. So as you can see, we've got good people coming in here. Damir Sumunic up front looks like he could be pretty useful. Um, we have Vinkin Peretin, or Vinko Peretin, or Peretin, who looks like he could be pretty good as well. And then a lot of people that have got pretty decent potential. Uh, Carlo Mihigovic was already here. Josip Zilic was already here. But Yakov Pusic at holding midfield looks like he could be pretty good as well. Uh, we have Skender, centre-back. Lots of work needed, but he's looking okay. Good, Pretty good determination, so should see a good increase in his stats. And uh, Yuri Dadic on the left of midfield. Not a position we're using at the moment, but... Well, actually, ironically, we are training a tactic with right and left uh, midfielders. But, yeah, again, decent determination. Hopefully, we'll be able to fulfil quite a lot of that potential. Yeah, so it's going... We've got what looks like a decent foundation from a youth system to come in. We've let quite a lot of people go. If we just go and look at the finances before we go into the transfers, we're £496,000 in debt. The chairman gave us another one hundred grand, and, you know, we don't ask questions about where it comes from. This is just what we do. Um, so we've got rid of some players to release the wage budget. It looks like Josip Granik could be... Oh, no, he rejected the contract, so he's going to stay. But we're going to transfer history. On the outs, then, you can see here, we've... Uh, Karlovacic, who we bought in on a free, has now moved on for 1.5k, possibly on to 1.8k. Antonio Pavlec, um, who's a very highly rated goalkeeper, was unhappy and destroying the dressing room atmosphere. So he's moved on to Osijek, who are in the second division, I think. Uh, the first league, he's actually gone to a first division team. So obviously had quite a good um, like potential ability and the game thinks he's going to turn out all right. It's our born 7k, but within that we've got a 50% um, of the next sale fee. So whatever they sell him for, we'll get 50% of it. The same with Josip Latika, who um, actually moved to Valazadin. He was another goalkeeper. 19 years old, he's moved to Valazadin. Are they the team in the city? They're, they're in the second division. He's moved there, but for free, but with a 50% sell on uh, any fee they get. We get 50% of it. And then Milos Jokic from Istria in 1961. We've sold for £500, going up to 1.5k if he makes 10 appearances. And we've got 50% of his next sale fee as well. The only problem is there, he's also a goalkeeper. So what we did is then we sold him and then loaned him straight back because we only had one actual goalkeeper at the club, which was Kiznevich. So we've done that. On the ins, though, we've been out and tapping into the loan market. 
Uh, we bought the last person we bought in that you saw was Zampierre, the holding midfielder. He's been playing quite well for us. We've bought in Josip Mitrovic, who's an attacking midfielder, centre or left. He's okay. He's pretty good. I mean, he started his career pretty well. Three appearances, three goals, and an 8.2. So I can't really complain about that. Then we've brought in right back Josip Palik to back, be a bit of a, more of a backup to Obsevich, who seems to be a bit injury prone. 17 years old on loan from Lokomotiva. Three appearances, one assist, getting a seven. So again, he's playing well. We brought in a striker from Lokomotiva as well, Filip Hryanyek, who on his debut scored within 32 seconds. So started to sit very well. Two goals in two appearances and a 7.85 rating. Very happy with that. But then we've brought in Milos Jokic, the goalkeeper, who we've already discussed. And we've brought in Carlo Matkovic, who's a backup left-back for us because we only have one out-and-out left-back. He's come in, hasn't made an appearance for us yet, but I'm sure it won't be too long. And then from Rijeka, we've brought in Andrea Liba, just to give us a bit more of an option in the central midfield, where we have enough players, but they're not of the best quality, and a lot of the players are starting to get this feels the squad is starting to lack depth in midfield so that's something we're going to have to look to change um going into next season so our last game together was the 2-2 draw against Zagadec and we have progressed quite far as I said we backed up a 5-0 win we absolutely smashed Jaron who are the team rooted to the bottom of the table um a fantastic performance five different goal scorers it was a really really good but a 1-1 draw against Optia was a bit disappointing then we had came into this era where as I said morale started to drop a little bit a friendly loss 1-1 draw against Yandan and Podec, which wasn't very good 1-1-0 loss to Maximir. Then we beat Lokomotiva 2-0 in a friendly, which was very nice. Uh, and we beat Vinograd 3-2 in the league. Then we had a little bit of a winter break. Um, got two friendlies involved in Nitra and Rudez, which was good to get a draw and a win out of that. And then, pretty appalling, uh, a 2-1 loss to Spansko. Draw with Ujapest, lost to heavily to Henschke Garika. Into Zabreski, draw 1-1. Then we drew a HASK 1-1. Friendly win, friendly win, and then morale started to come back up, and you could see it in the results. We played Jugo Cello, um, and we won 3-2, which was very, very nice. Goal scorers coming from midfield as well, which was good to see. Um, a very good performance against Gusa in an 8-1 away win in a friendly. Uh, then we beat Verbovec 8-3 in the league. Their guy got a hat-trick, but... We got two goals for Hranik on his debut. We had two goals for Kubel on his return from injury. Two goals for Bektasi and two goals for Josip Mitrovic on his debut as well. It was absolutely fantastic. 566 people turned out at the Kranjevica to watch it. Um, and then we followed that up with a 5-0 friendly win against Dobra Siva Pitar, which I'm pretty sure I may have butchered that name. Um, then 6-1 we beat Inkop, and we've just beaten Novigrad in the league 2-1. They got back, uh, with the, sorry, with the, they took the lead, and then we got a 71st and an 86th minute goal. Mitrovic playing very well at the moment for us on loan. And uh, we've had a friendly win against Spartak MS, and we're going to be playing one game against Ponikivi or Ponkivi, or however you pronounce that, who are 17th in the league, not doing all that well, down in the second bottom. I mean, Yarun are, are done. If there was a relegation spot, they would have confirmed it by now. Top goal score for us in the league is Mario Kubel, and the highest average rating is Kubel as well. But if we go into into it, look at the stats a bit more. This is the guy that scored the hat-trick against us and has immediately gone on my shortlist. He is very, very good. Um, good definitely going to be someone I'm looking to bring in at some point. Kubel has the highest rating of everybody in the league, joint with Matteo Monjak. Um, and then players in the matches up there with five. Other than that, we're struggling to get people into these top three lists, which is a bit of an annoyance. I think that's something we really sort of need to work on. Generally, though, we're playing quite well. Up in eighth is a good, it's a good position for us to be in at the moment. Um, I'm very happy with how it's working. But let's get into the game. So just before we get into the game, a very important screen I've been looking at is the dynamic. So this is where the dressing room atmosphere had got down into the red, and I was trying to figure out why. So I looked into the happiness and realised that quite a few people are actually slightly dissatisfied with the management of the club. And this is because, of if you click on it, it lets you know where. Um, so, yeah, concerns feel the start starting to lack depth in midfield, which is why we need to start really focusing on that. But what you can do is you can go through and see what everybody else is concerned about. So starting to deserves a new contract, so I offered him one, he rejected it. Uh, playing time, uh, Koklovic, yeah, you know, wants for more first team opportunities. What we had is we had one that was, um, I think it was treatment down here to see what it was like, and quite a few people had dissatisfied. So I went in and just praised their conduct, and they absolutely loved it. 
I mean, I don't know. I may have already... I'm not going to risk it because I think I've already done it the last time just before I reloaded the game. So we're going to have to get into the into the game. And then future on down the line, you'll see me do it where I praise their conduct and it improves their how they're feeling and how they feel about the club and everything like that, which is really good to do. So it's a good little tip if anyone's doing lower league management. But this is how we're going to go into the game. It'll be Kuznezovic in goal, Obsevich, Taric, Sadiki and Dedic are the back four. They've sort of made the positions all their own and Taric is now can play at centre-back, which is good to see. He is learning it pretty well. We've got him training on it which is good. Uh, Karimi in front of them, Pierre and Bektasi in the middle. Kubel, Mitrovic on the left, and Hranic starts up front. On the bench leaves us Regovic, Tramatona, Vinsky, Ramadani, Kurtovic, Matkovic, and Koklovic as well. We're not really, we don't go for a sub goalkeeper on the bench at the moment. Uh, that one day that will come back and bite me in the arse, and I don't normally do it. I normally always have a goalkeeper on the bench, but. At the moment, I'm going against it. So I'm going to tell them I expect nothing else than a win because they are rooted near the bottom of the table. They're second, second bottom rooted near the bottom of the table. And we've been playing pretty damn well. There I am looking. Look how much look how much in fashion I look compared to their manager. It's just it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? He's wearing all black like he's going to a funeral. I'm there rocking brown brown trousers, brown shoes, blue j black jazer, a blue jacket is what I'm trying why was that so hard to say a blue jacket um, and a white shirt I mean it's just the epitome of cool as Bektasi looks to fire in this corner towards the back post Dedic heads it back across Pierre's there and that's a rifled finish from Zane Pierre the St. Lucian International puts us 1-0 up inside 5 minutes Bektasi to the back post that we work on this Dedic down to Pierre keeper's got no chance 1-0 to Zagreb a wonderful start to the game um, it's our first shot on target. It is only five minutes gone, though, so you could probably understand that. But we're up to seventh position as Obsivac, Obsivac puts it in. Bektasi gets there in front of the defence. He then gets around a couple of tackles. Kubel tries to battle his way around, and he's won a penalty for us. And it's going to be Bektasi that takes this. He scored his last penalty, rifling it down the middle of the goal. And the keeper probably sensibly jumped out of the way. And this time he went down the middle again, and Kubic saves it. For Ponkivy, is that just going to raise them up and raise their game? We'll have to wait and see as Dedic takes the throw into Mitrovic, who loses out. Glasovic has the ball, holds on to it, just sort of dallying on the ball a bit. Sukic out to Glasovic again. Glasovic comes forward with it, looks over the top. Pasevic will get there. No, he won't. Taric will intercept it with his big ginger hair. Siddiqui looks over the top. It's a poor pass, but Bektasi keeps it alive. Hranjek into Mitrovic. Mitrovic, ball over the top, into Kubel. Kubel cuts it back. Hranjek is there, can't get a shot. If Mitrovic does. And the guy that's on loan has already scored four goals of the season. He's only been here for three games. What a start he's having to his Zagreb save. Is this going to be a player that we're going to have to bring in again from Lokomotiva? Or is it Rijeka? I can't remember. But Hranic here, his shot was blocked. Mitrovic on the rebound. His reflex is there to get on that. Incredible stuff. It's 2-0 Zagreb. What a start. It's looking really, really good. But Hranic could be in again. It's a free kick. Is that a red card? Was he the last man? Relota. The referee's pulled out the red. See you later. I mean... The commentator said he can have no arguments. They've, they've bought off someone and brought on a centre-back. Kubel shoots from the free kick. What a save from the keeper. Bektasi can't get there. And it's fired up to Kerbalic, who will now probably find himself pretty isolated up front. Or Posovac is actually the striker. So Kubel with another free kick. Lines it up this time. It just goes the wrong side of the post. So unlucky there as Kupic has the goal kick. Goes long. Not very long at all. It's short enough for Kalimi to win it. Mitrovic down the left-hand side. Can he put this across? Mitrovic, he's tackled well by Rakulic, but... The clearance to nobody. They're just sitting back. They can't get out, Ponkivi. Obseyevich comes forward, crosses it in. It's there, Bektasi at the back post. Sixth goal of the season. Thank you very much indeed. It's 3-0. Uh, well, this is incredible. It was picked up here by Taric. Taric laid it down the line to Obseyevic. Ob Obsev I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name wrong. Obseyevic dinks it to the back post. And Bektasi's there. Good header. I mean, they are all over the place, Ponkivi. This is a fantastic, fantastic start to the game. And we've missed a penalty. Goal kick again. Kupic puts it forward. Hasn't gotten the most distance on it. Hanik will pick up that header from Siddiqui. And looks out to the left of Mitrovic. Mitrovic just holds it up. Puts a cross in. Pierre's there. And Pierre has got his second goal of the game. His third goal of the season. Zane Pierre, the St. Lucian midfielder. No one's, no one's picking up his runs. Look at him go. Look at the numbers we put forward. That's why I love this formation. I've actually called this formation four. You can just see it in the top up here. Four, one, two, two, one. Attack, 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 it's called. Because 
a team once you get the ball and you counter attack people with this formation teams just can't deal with it like the amount of numbers you put forward is incredible uh, as you can see they've sacrificed their left winger to try and give us a spot uh, to try and let us well not let us get in the game but that's what they felt they had to do to bring on a center back but 4-0 at half time and it's not even half time yet but we've got another free kick. Kubel shoots from this one again. I'd probably prefer to see him dink those into an area where we can attack it. But when you're 4-0 up, I guess I don't. it doesn't really matter. Complacent, Keznevich in goal. Karimi is disinterested. But this is a fantastic performance. And it put just... I don't know. Are we in touching distance? 12 points. I don't think we've got enough games to make up 12 points. Bektasi. Dedic at the back post again. This time he's beaten in the air, but he'll get to the clearance first. He has got a ball square here, but he goes into Karimi. Karimi out to Obseovic on the right-hand side. Pierre looking for a hat-trick, remember now, Pierre. Obseovic swings that ball in. Zivkovic gets it away. Oh, I thought Pierre. I thought it was just going to fall to Pierre's feet for a wonder volley. Obseovic out to Karimi, into Pierre. Pierre shoots. Oh, Kupic makes the save. Remains 4-0, and that will see us through to half-time. So into half-time, we go 4-0 lead and a missed penalty. We are playing incredibly low. Look at this, 13 shots, 8 on target. None for them. I think we just tell the guys assertively, don't let your performance levels drop. Let's keep this going. Passionately, um, I shouldn't really be saying you weren't that bad, but I think we've been absolutely incredible. As uh, Zan Pierre, I should, probably should have given him a different team talk to everybody else, but... I mean, 4-0 up. He's got two goals. Let's hope he can get a hat-trick in this game as well. But Obseovic comes forward on the right-hand side from the kickoff. this. Obseovic comes forward, looks to put it in, and it's cleared away. And that will probably just get us through that first highlight and does. Now, the plan is that we're going to do this one game in this episode. Then we're going to just basically play through to the end of the season. We'll come back for the last game of the season, which isn't far away at all. And, uh, and then we'll have a little bit of a season review with that one game, go through it, and then we'll be back for the start of the second season, and I'll do all of the, the transfers and stuff behind the scenes. I'm still sort of hoping we get a buyer for the club. The chairman doesn't really want to sell, but we need... We, oh, we don't need investment. It's just that we're very much well above our wage budget, and the board are aware of that, and they're not, they're not overly happy. They're very happy with how we're doing on the pitch. They're not happy with what's happening off it in the finances terms. I mean... I, it's nothing. To, I'm I'm still acting, by the way, like my webcam's on. Like I've got my hands in the air, trying to like doing hand gestures and stuff. We're not worried about where the money comes from, but we have to stay within our budgets, and we need to let some people go in the summer, I think, and make sure that we replace them with good enough, uh, good enough players or good enough loanees. But then I don't I don't want to be one of those clubs that relies on loanees to get you promoted, and then you can't get those loanees back because um, the clubs want to keep them because they've played well for you, etc., etc. But It'll be interesting to see what happens, but I'm looking forward to next year. I think we've we've put our stamp on this team now. They're playing how I want them to play. Um, they're really getting involved with the game, and we're, we're playing well. We are playing well. We're going to bring Matt Kovic on for a, a debut for Dedic. He's had a great game on an 8.3, and I'm just wondering if we bring on Vinsky for Bektasi, because I want to kind of keep Bektasi fit. Or do I try and... Let's bring Regovic on for Hilanjic and try and get him a goal. They got Bektasi with a corner and it goes Pierre's free at the back post, but it's just over hit from Bektasi. Pierre goes back to Mitrovic into Taric. Taric, the centre-back slash centre midfielder, uh, puts it over. Obviously, we're retraining him as a centre-back. Are we going to restrict them to no shots in this game? I know they got a man sent off early, but I would just tell him to have a pop shot. But we're going into the last few minutes of the game and it is only going to be a short episode today. I apologise, but as I said, I have been actually at the hospital today with this thing for my face. Um, don't worry if you people miss webcam. It will be back at some point in the future. It just depends on how long it takes for my face to heal. Um, and it was nothing like crucial or too bad, so don't worry about it. But Mitrovic comes forward. Mitrovic is here and he lays it back. This will probably be the end of the game as they're just keeping a bit of the keep ball now. Ramadani into Pierre. Pierre Bektasi out to great ball out to Obseovic. Obseovic comes forward. Can we get one final goal? Puts it in. Zivkovic heads it away. No, we can't. There's the full time whistle. A very easy win. A very good performance from the boys. Passionately very happy with that result. That's sorted out Zane. He's happy with that now. Zane Pierre, which is an amazing name, by the way. Yeah, up to seventh, so not too bad. And um, there's also literally no competition money in the th Croatian third league you get nothing there is nothing about anything for finishing places there's no prize money there's nothing there's nothing I don't know like it's horrible I don't know how we're going to get income selling people obviously but 
Yeah, we've got 34 games in the season, and we've now played... Oh, Pierre, well done. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a shout-out. Well done. Superb in front of goal. Really like it. Yeah, so we've got an unbeaten record, which is good. Five matches in a row without losing, which is very, very nice. We've played 28 games. Now, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not rushing the save. You know I'm not like that to do it when I'm doing a build the club up. But we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six fixtures left. We're going to be back for the last... The next time we're back is the last game of the season against Jeroen, where... We should, in theory, absolutely hammer them. We're at home. They're rubbish. We've beaten them. What did we beat them? What did I say? It was like 5-0 or something. We beat them away. Yeah, 5-0 beat them away. So we really should be beating them quite considerably at home. And it's the last game of the season. It'll give us a chance to go through the first season, just see where we need to improve, what sort of players we're probably thinking about getting rid of. Because um, if we just have a quick look at contracts, these high earners, I mean, Dedic, we sort of have to keep. Karimi... We could get rid of if we could bring in someone like Ramadani in on a maybe permanent deal for less of a wage or on another loan. Um, Kiznevich I'd like to keep. He's my club captain. He's a very good goalkeeper at this level. Um, Regovic, I couldn't. I wouldn't be too bad if he left. I think there's better options out there. Bektasi, Taric and Kubel. That's what I mean. All these people we're paying the bigger wages to are actually quite crucial to how we play. So if we get rid of them, then we've got to really consider what we're going to do to to replace them and, and what, who are we going to bring to do it do we trust these youngsters that have come through the the youth intake day do we shove Vico Perit in as our striker and just see what he can do maybe that's an option he's on two pound a week so it could be pretty useful I think there are rules about how old you can be to play in the Croatian third division even though they're not stated in the league competition rules here I'm pretty sure yeah, I think you have to be 16. I think you have to be 16 to be able to play because you have to be on a minimum wage. So we'll see what happens. But let me know in the comments below. Please do let me know in the comments below. What do you think we should do next season? Do we just do we sort out the finances first because that's going to be crucial to becoming a professional team? Do we sort them out, get the wage budget all in order and everything like that and and see how we go? I mean, it's interesting to see that next season wage budget's already been set approximately at 2.9, which is sort of what we're spending now. It's, it's interesting. We'll have to see what happens. But we'll leave it there. They're all going to go to the outro page. So here you are. Thank you very much all the patrons that we've got. If you want to be a patron and get your name in the game, then just let me know down below. Ross Jacobs is going to be um, a coach at the club when we bring in new coaches. Ken Wynn will be the new chief scout when we get a new chief scout in. Uh, Brett Higgins is already the head of youth development. Um, I think Lovro, uh, Callum, Marco Toss, Jan Petrik and Gio, I think, are all going to be players that are in the game. And Derek Murphy just needs to let me know, but he'll probably be a regen as well. Um, in fact, Derek, you let me know on Patreon. You are going to be um, just a regenerated player. So if any of you guys that need a name in the game fancy being one of the under-19 players that we have got in with these relatively high potential for the club at the moment... Just let me know and that will be done. But thank you so much for watching, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll chat to you all very soon. And for now, I'm out. Cheers.